I'd like to call to order the meeting of the St. Mary's County Board of Education for Wednesday, March 22nd, 2017. May I have a motion to move into executive session? I move we enter into executive session for personnel, collective bargaining, or legal property acquisition issues and student issues, Maryland Local Government Code, Article Section 9-512, A-126 and 10. Do I have a second? I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. the meeting for the St. Mary's County Board of Education for Wednesday, March 22nd, 2017, and we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. With that, may I have a motion to approve the agenda? I move approval of the agenda as presented. Do I have a second? I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried, and we will start with board reports. You're first. So in recent weeks, I have gotten a chance to work with the executive board of the Southern Maryland Association of Student Councils. So um, that's just an organization that um, gathers student councils from all of our public middle and high schools and we meet once every other month approximately um, to hold new uh, elections and just to talk about topical issues in our school system. And recently, um, I spoke of this one last time, we've been doing a lot of workshops during that time um, because a lot of times when we're in middle school especially and in high school, we know that we want to implement programs in our schools but sometimes we're not sure on how exactly do, to do that because change can be somewhat daunting. Um, so the executive board and I have been working together to hold workshops on public speaking, on implementing programs, on decision making, teamwork, listening, things like that, so that middle schoolers and high schoolers can understand how, you know, focusing on those basic skills can help us in the future. So whenever we do a workshop, what they do is after they learn how exactly they should be doing the workshop and how they can be teaching it, they go back to their own schools and most of them implement something there. So it's been a lot of fun to see the progress with the um, activities. And a lot of them are sometimes silly, but a lot of them are helpful in a rather fun way. Mrs. Weaver? Well, first I would like to give a shout out to my brother Andrew and all those in the community, in our community with Down syndrome. Yesterday was World Down Syndrome Day. March 21st, and it is held on the 21st uh, because there is an extra chromosome on the 21st pair. So it's uh, also known as trisomy 21. So um, just in recognition of our community members and to my wonderful brother uh, that has Down syndrome. Um, this week, these past two weeks, I went to numerous things, and one of the things that I went to uh, right down the street from me is Ridge Elementary <laughs> School. And they had their, um, their robotics club, which is called the Rockets, held a information session for the, um, the corporations that sponsor them. Um, I also met Coach Dave, who is a 11th grader at Great Mills High School, who is their coach, who has done a, a phenomenal job with these elementary students. He also helped coach them last year. They went to World I don't know if it's called World Games, but uh, it's a, an event. They are all, what is it called? Vex World. Vex World, okay. <laughs> um, but they're also going again this year. It's being held in Kentucky, so congratulations to them. They did a great job um, speaking in front of, there was quite a large crowd that came uh, about what they do with their, uh, you know, programming of their, robots and um, how they work together as a team and uh, a lot of the people the corporation people you know they are sponsoring they wanted to know certain things and they were able to answer the questions they were very professional and um, I was very impressed with how mature these students were they shook hands with everyone that came in introduced themselves I mean for elementary school students they you know 
and, and showed pride in their uh, in their school and in what they do. So congratulations to them for going to Kentucky and also to Coach Dave from Great Mills High School who coaches this team. All done? Yeah. Um, uh, I took my granddaughter to uh, West Virginia University. She got accepted. And I mentioned earlier uh, she went to a two-year school at Nova. And uh, the nice thing about these two-year community colleges if you have a grade point average, I think in Virginia it's 3.0, you're guaranteed acceptance into a number of fine schools in Virginia and also West Virginia. So I went to the campus. Um, when I was in school in the, a long time ago, we played, uh, we played Syracuse. I mean, uh, I was at Syracuse and we <laughs> played uh, uh, West Virginia. Uh, I didn't have a chance until now to go to see the campus. It's really a beautiful campus. It's really grown. Um, there's, it's true that it's very hilly, uh, so uh, I just hope she's got some good running shoes to, to, uh, to go to each of her classes. Uh, I also attended um, the uh, uh, Women's History uh, Month banquet uh, where we honored, um, or they honored, uh, Barbara Thompson. Uh, with me was uh, Mrs. Allen and uh, Mrs. Washington, and I'll let them speak a little bit more about it. But uh, for you uh, folks that know uh, uh, Barbara Thompson, she's got an incredible resume. I mean, she's been former president of the county commissioners. She's done just about everything. So it was a great honor, I think, uh, that she was uh, awarded this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, reward. Um, I, lastly, I attended the uh, my wife was out of town at the uh, Snowed Inn in Philadelphia at the uh, flower show with her girlfriend. Um, so I had to, I was forced to attend the uh, Retirement Maryland Teachers Association banquet. And it was, uh, I, I say that tongue in cheek, uh, they're very nice folks and uh, I, I probably made the last uh, three or four years I made most of their meetings. So that's what I've um, let's see, my mom duties have overtaken me the past two weeks um, with uh, spring sports starting. Um, I would like to thank all of the students, teachers, and staff at Lay Marshall Dent um, for, um, I guess, continuing on in the face of adversity, meaning no electricity last um, uh, Tuesday, was it? Yes, it was Tuesday. Um, so, um, I was in there Thursday volunteering. Uh, the kids actually had a blast. They thought it was like the best school day ever. Um, so, and they didn't, they, you know, they didn't watch movies because there was no electricity, but um, even my son is like, this was like awesome. So um, thank you to everyone. I know it was a challenge for everyone involved. Um, I think Dr. Walker, who uh, was uh, running uh, shifts up there to make sure that everything was was working as smoothly as possible without uh, power. And then I'm going to give a plug to Chopticon High School and Margaret Brent Middle School. Their joint production of Cinderella um, opening night is tomorrow mm -hmm. night at six o'clock. Mrs. Weaver and I will be there um, with my daughter because she has a number of her friends who are in the production. I think they've been working on this since October. Um, to pull it all together and um, I've seen several pictures of just the costumes alone and they are phenomenal so um, it runs through Sunday I think there's two performances Saturday and then another two on Sunday in addition to tomorrow night and Friday night so and you can go online and purchase your tickets pick your seats um, in the theater and just go out and have um, a good time I know they've been working incredibly hard on it um, and it has been a, a great uh, collaboration between the two schools. So, Mrs. Washington. Thank you. The Education Association of St. Mary's County does many things other than negotiate ag an agreement with the Board of Education regarding salary, wages, and working conditions. And they did two great things, and it happened in February. But the board, um, you can't talk about everything you go to because we would be here a long time doing that. But I wanted to bring it up. Um, they, pre, um, they presented Screen Agers, which was a movie that was held at the RC Theater in Lexington Park. 
on February the 2nd, and it was free. <clears throat> it was a movie depicting the messy struggles over so social media, video games, academics, and the internet addiction, which many people suffer with. And I tried to get a ticket for it, but they didn't have any more tickets, so I didn't get an opportunity to see that. But I was able to <laughs> attend a second presentation that was held at Leonardtown High School. It was a presentation done by a member of the Department of Justice, and it was on Innocent Stolen, Protecting Our Children Online. That was very good. The, it was a packed audience, and it was followed by a uh, Q&A session. Now, how it got started, Don Pipkin attended a Maryland State Department of Education professional development training, and she thought what she learned would be good to bring back to the county. And so she and her Instructional Professional Development Committee got together and did just that. All parents, students, teachers, and community members were invited to Leonardtown High School on that Monday night, February the 13th. And it was followed by Q&A, as I said. And it was determined in the study that was done that teens are sharing more personal information about themselves on social network. They've been, 92% will tell their real name. 84% will talk about their interests and activities. 82% will give their birth dates. And 62% will tell about their relationship status. And 24% will present videos of themselves some acceptable and some unacceptable. And those things will come to haunt them years in the future when they try to look for meaningful employment. And only 9% of the teens say that they are concerned about third party access to their data. They're not even concerned about it. So this presentation was to educate the parents, students, and community members how dangerous that is when young people put this information out and adults put this information out online. And Eric Schmidt, the CEO of Google said in 2010, we know where you are, we know where you've been, we more, we know more or less what you're thinking because you put it out there and everybody can figure out what you're doing. And so there were some safeguards for using the internet, your mobile phone, and texting. And some of the suggestions were to parents, do teach your children not to post identifying information on the internet. Do set a limit on how much time your child can spend online. Do keep the computer in a public room in the house. Do utilize parental controls provided by your internet service provider or your blocking software. And they gave out a list of all those internet providers and the blocking software that you can use to monitor what your children are doing or to block things. Do talk to your children about purchasing in-app products. Do talk to your children about using any location services on their devices. Do periodically review your child's computer, email and messages. You should have all of your children's passwords. Do spend time with your child online. Have them show you their favorite online destination. Get to know your child's online friends as you would their real life friends and learn to navigate the web. Do know who they text and email. Most providers have online ways to identify Frequent contact, so you can see if someone new appears as a contact. Do monitor your child's access to the internet and texting. Do talk to your child about the dangers of internet predators. Do watch for unexplained changes in your child's behavior. And do not hesitate to seek help from law enforcement if you think a predator may be targeting your child. So it was free. It was available centrally located at Leonardtown High School, and that's something that our Education Association of St. Mary's County did for all people, and they paid for it. Also, I attended the Commission for Women's uh, Women's History Dinner. I want to uh, congratulate Barbara Thompson for being the first woman elected to the Board of County Commissioners. She is a history maker and a trailblazer and a model for 
young people and older people that you can be the first one to do something. You have to step out on courage and be the first one to do it. Somebody has to break the glass ceiling. Somebody has to make a difference. And for our, our students, you can be the first to do something. Also, I will be attend attending the play Cinderella. I already have tickets. I don't have any young children, but I'm gonna bring two little girls from my church and they're gonna dress up in costumes. <laughs> and if I can figure out one, I might wear a costume <laughs> too. So, I yeah, yeah. No I want the whole <laughs> outfit. You know, the glittery slippers, the I have a crown. crown for you. I need it all. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna get into it, just get into it. I might have to pull out my um, renewal dress that I wore when I renewed my vows. If I can still fit it, I might spruce that up and wear it. And, and I had the tiara to go with it, so we'll see. But we will be there to see the presentation. And thank you, Mr. Burroughs, for doing a good job being the supervisor of music and fine arts. And the students are doing a fantastic job. So. We don't have to leave the county to see good presentations. We can see them right here with our students because we have a very strong art and music program. And I have been visiting concerts. They are great. I know a jazz concert is coming up. I look forward to that. And they are free. So you don't have to pay. And you can see how the taxpayers' dollars are working to educate our students to be well-rounded individuals. More than math, science, and social studies, it's about art and drama and it's all that. So thank you, Mr. Burroughs and all the music and art educators and fine art educators, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I attended the uh, May legislative meeting um, this past Monday, Monday and the one um, two Mondays prior. Uh, I represent this board on the legislative committee. Um, there are a number of bills that, um, should they make it all the way through, will have a significant impact on um, the way we conduct our, our business, um, what's offered in our schools, and, um, and potentially have a, an impact on our budget as well in a number of different um, aspects. Um, and since everybody's putting plugs in for um, various uh, performances that are taking place. Um, just to let you know, Leonardtown High School will be putting on the Adams Family, and I believe it on the radio this morning. Great Mills High School, I believe, is doing Little, Little Shop, Shop of, of Horrors. Horrors. So there is something for everyone. So dress please. up for all of those. Oh yeah. Go as large. I think I'm a little short for large, but you know, I could always try. Stilts. I, I have not gotten on stilts since I was a kid, but you know, there's a first time for everything. Um, as long as my health insurance is paid up. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I'm sure I would fall off and hurt. Um, at any rate, uh, thanks very much. And uh, Mr. Smith, I'll turn it to you. Uh, I continued the rising freshman orientation evenings. I believe last time we had met, I had gone to Great Mills. We also did Leonardtown and Chopticon. We got out in front of over 2,000 rising freshman faces with their parents, and we talked about all of the choice and voice, like how they develop their voice and all the choices that are available to them. And I see that we're joined um, by uh, uh, Principal uh, Egan, who's going to be recognizing somebody on his staff. Um, and they really, I think people were overwhelmed by how many options they have available uh, to them. There was, I got to bring greetings to the All County Elementary School Honor String Orchestra and Honor Band Concert on March 9th at uh, Chapter High School. It was a great night. I finished off all of the classroom visits to all the Teacher of the Year nominees. So that is Piney Point Elementary School, Mar Maria Ficalora. That's it, Ficalora, <laughs> Chesapeake Public Charter School, Karen Ann Smart, uh, Dent Elementary School, Anna Jones, Margaret Brent Middle School, Ashley Abel, uh, Letty Marshall Dent, Kim Edwards. I got to visit her twice, first in the dark, where she had all the kids and they, were, they had flashlights and it was very, very creative. And then, uh, yeah, then the next day, in the light, um, <laughs> Lexington Park Elementary School, Kimberly Goldbach, and um, one of the last people I visited was Don Vosberg, who is at Oakville Elementary School, and hopefully we'll be bringing her son, Sean, back here to be recognized. He's a freshman 
at uh, Chopticon High School, and he won the state wrestling championship for the 106-pound wow. class in the, as a freshman. Wow. So um, I talked to her a little bit about uh, arranging when we do recognitions in May to, to bring in Sean so we could uh, heap some praise on that fantastic accomplishment. Uh, so last week on Tuesday, the good news is we didn't use a snow day. The bad news is the whole northern part of the county was encased in ice, not on the roads, but on the trees, and they fell on power lines and we lost power. Um, but we've only used one snow day. So that means that at our next board meeting, I will bring before you a, an amendment request for the Board of Education, which means that all things staying the way they are, uh, our last day of school will be on June 9th, Friday, June 9th. So kids will be out of school for three weeks in June, all of July, the entire month of August. They will forget what their schools look like. So um, it'll be, and you and parents, you'll be happy to be sending them back. So. Um, at least that's what I hear from people at my house. Uh, we had the budget work session with the county commissioners yesterday. Um, where we are in the process, we're going to be bringing back before you for our next meeting either an information work session or a little bit of both so we can talk about how we're going to, uh, how we need to make the budget work for next year. Um, we're a little off what we requested, and so we're going to have to make some accommodations for that. Um, the last thing is on April 28th, we have a job fair coming up for all of the people who are interested in coming to work for St. Mary's County, specifically teachers in particular. Uh, from what I understand, we opened it up and we've been taking reservations. We're already well over 100 people who are going to be coming in for the job fair. They can interview with any one of the 27 schools. We'll have representatives there. If you haven't seen us on social media, check it out. We've got people going out and saying, we can't wait to meet you. And it's um, people in the staff. It's really cute kids in front of their schools. It's, it's all, all walks of school life saying, we can't wait to meet our new teachers. So let's get really excited about bringing people down to St. Mary's County. It is a great place to work and learn. And so with that, this is Bailey. Thank you. All right, we're going to roll right into, I'm, I'm waiting very patiently, thank you. Um, recognitions, Mr. Todd Bird. First, let me thank all of you. All of you. <clears throat> Truly, without your support, we would not be able to have those wonderful concerts and performances that our students give. So when I say I thank you, I truly mean it. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you. Tonight, we'd like to recognize those students whose artwork is being displayed in the third marking period superintendent's art gallery. If you're not familiar with the art gallery, each marking period, teachers send me artwork that we then display in the back of the room and then down the hallway leading to Mr. Smith's office. You know, it really is a great way to showcase the talents of our students here in SMCPS. So, at this time, Mr. Smith, if you could please join me. And then students, when we call your name, we ask that you go to the back of the room and then walk down the red carpet and come up and receive your certificate. So we are going to start with Miss Myra Day. Uh, oh, absolutely. Next, we have Miss Emily McCluskey. Congratulations, Emily. And your picture is like just triangles interlocking. It's really cool. It's right outside of the Safety and Security Office. Next, we have Ms. Kara Perry.
And our last recognition this evening is Ms. Megan Carrig. So I just do want to say one thing, and I, and, I, and I keep on saying the same thing every time we have a new group of eight artists who share their work with us. This is really important. It's really important that you create these incredible things, and it's really important that we as adults take the time to appreciate your artwork. So every single time that we meet in here and every single time we gather people in for meetings that sometimes aren't really exciting, they can, their eyes can wander and they can see these fantastic works of art and it fills them with joy. And if they're coming down the hall to my office, perhaps they're not coming down for a pleasant thing, but they'll see your <laughs> lovely artwork and it fills them with joy. So just thank you, thank you, thank you very much for sharing. Now, very quickly, we have staff recognitions, and then we're going to take a break um, so we can talk to everyone out there. So uh, Ms. Bachner, somewhere, I see her, uh, Dr. Roper, and uh, Mr. Egan. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Burroughs has got quite a, quite a lot of accolades today, and I'm going to continue <laughs> that. Um, if I had to probably read my bio and accomplishments, it would not take too long. But Mr. Burroughs, I actually had to weed because we would be here quite a bit of time. Um, he's quite a remarkable young man, um, and I say young because he's way younger than I am. Um, and I've had the pleasure of working closely with him since July, so it's been a real pleasure. Um, Mr. Burroughs is currently the Supervisor of Instruction for Fine Arts in St. Mary's County. He's the President of the Maryland Directors Association and formerly the Director of Bands at Chopticon High School in Morganza, Maryland. Under Mr. Burroughs' direction, the band program at Chopticon has consistently been recognized for its achievement and its dedication to excellence. The Chopticon bands, under his direction, have received official citations from the St. Mary's County Board of County Commissioners, resolutions from the Maryland Senate and House of Delegates, an official citation from the Maryland General Assembly, and a congressional record statement from the United States House of Representatives. In 2010, Mr. Burroughs was recognized as the 2010 Chopticon High School Teacher of the Year and is a nominee of St. Mary's County Public Schools Teacher of the Year. And in 2016, Mr. Burroughs was recognized as the Maryland Music Educators Association Music Outstanding Music Teacher. Every two years, all members of the Maryland Music Educators are eligible to vote for board members of each component, band, chorus, orchestra, general music, and a collegiate mem representative. Mr. Burroughs was elected as the Maryland Band Educators Association president and is now serving the first year of his two-year term, along with a brand new job. <laughs> his duties for that role as president include planning and implementing the two state music educators' professional development conferences, planning and running the state high school, middle school, and state solo and ensemble festivals, excuse me, assessments. He has to assist with the planning and execution of the junior and senior all-state band auditions. He selects the conductors for the junior, senior, and all-state jazz ensembles, and he helps to plan and assist with the junior, senior, and all-state jazz band rehearsals and concerts, write professional articles, which I've seen, for the journal that is published three times a year, and he assists with the creation of the budget that is required. As you can see and hear, we are very fortunate that Mr. Burroughs calls St. Mary's County Public Schools his home, and we congratulate him for this achievement. Congratulations.
Good evening. First, I'd like to thank Miss Buckner for making me feel old by referees. <laughs> <laughs> youthfulness of my colleague over there. But, uh, um, I think it would be very difficult for anybody to find uh, anybody in the teaching ranks in St. Mary's County that puts in more hours than our athletic directors. Uh, on days when uh, some teachers are excited because maybe we do have a snow day, um, athletic directors are still working because they're on the phone, they're talking to uh, coaches, to officials, to transportation, they're rearranging things with other athletic directors, so their work goes on. They are in 12-month positions, so although some of our students will be having a, a longer vacation this summer than normal, come August the 9th, uh, our athletic programs will be up and running again, and obviously a lot has to be done before that. Um, the Maryland State Athletic Directors Association uh, recognizes a district athletic director from each of the nine districts across Maryland. Those nine districts are determined by the Maryland State Public Schools uh, Athletic Association. And, and this year, Mr. Tira from Leonardtown High School was selected as the District 4 Athletic Director of the Year. He will actually receive his award uh, in April at the State Athletic Directors Conference down in Ocean City. Uh, but we do, have a, we do actually have a certificate for you for today. <laughs> yeah. We weren't too sure about that a little earlier on. Um, uh, so at this time, I'd like to invite him to, to come forward. So. And I'd also like to recognize his principal, Mr. Mike Watson, for being here as well. So. And as, and as Mr. Smith goes through that, I'd just like to share a few things about Mr. Tier and embarrass him while he stays up here for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> just, just stay for a second. Sure. <laughs> yeah. um, Mr. Tier is a member of the National uh, Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association, through which he qualified as a certified athletic director in 2013. He's a member of the State Athletic Directors Association and has uh, been a representative at, from our district to that organization in the past. Within the Southern Maryland Athletic Conference, he's held uh, sport committee chair uh, responsibilities because uh, each sport has to have a chair and they're made up of athletic directors from across the Southern Maryland area. Uh, <laughs> he's also been secretary and vice president in recent years. This coming summer, he takes over as president of SMAT for the next two years, so all the SMAT meetings the pre and post meetings of each season will be held here in this room uh, across the course of the year. And his role at president will be to guide that organization. The uh, business, is the work of the organization is done through boards of control that he will, he will be in charge of, uh, at which time all rules of the conference are established for the particular sports, the divisional championship, the way that that is set up, <laughs> Uh, and uh, oversees all the scheduling as well that goes with that as well. He's been at Leonardtown High School as athletic director for about eight, eight, years, eight, eight years now. Seems like 20. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, some, Mr. If you've been in athletics, you know, some days, some days are long days. Uh, and in recent years, he's initiated such things as uh, installing some Bermuda grass fields, realigning baseball and softball fields, uh, he also started the Raider Athletic Program, promoting uh, academics uh, in the school. And among, among his many duties are sort of coordinating building usage and extra pay for extra duty. We're very fortunate to have somebody with his expertise. Uh, had a career many years ago, started with the uh, US uh, Army Airborne. He used to be six foot seven. <laughs> and uh, I'm glad somebody got that right. He can be and, uh, but, 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 it's seen, but since then, it has uh, gained about 30 years of experience. Um, and people think, how do you become an athletic director? And, and it's very, very difficult. Sometimes it's a little baptism by fire. You're suddenly in the position, and you learn on the, on the, on the road, as it were. But over the years, Mr. Tier has coached football, basketball, baseball, softball, track and field, and men's volleyball. And having that experience does help, obviously, anybody do the job. Right now, he oversees 19 sports. Uh, many of those have uh, both 
the varsity and junior varsity teams. The actual award from the state athletic direction, and I just wanted to get the words right on this, is presented to athletic administrators who have made a significant impact on the lives of students and used athletics to achieve progress in the social and cultural environment of the school and the community. So again, would you please join me in congratulating Mr. Tira. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, this evening, I'm, I'm very proud to be here. I'd like to thank the Board of Ed members and Mr. Smith for allowing this opportunity uh, to recognize Ms. Kraft. Uh, each year, the Maryland State Department of Education's Division of College and Career Readiness asks local systems and community colleges to submit nominations for annual career and technology education awards of excellence. This year, the Forest Center nominated counselor Diana Kraft for her work in marketing all of the amazing programs that the Forest Center has to offer. Deanna was responsible for the following activities and programs. The Forest Center Tech Expo, and I, those of you who have been there know uh, what an event that is, and it is an amazing opportunity for our uh, students to really show their talents. And uh, we hosted over 700 students this year and their families. Um, the Forest Center Video Tours, uh, which we do at each of the high schools and the Fair Lead Academy in which we go to those schools and uh, highlight each of the programs and have presentations and answer questions for ninth and 10th grade students who may be interested in the Forest Center. Uh, she's also uh, responsible for organizing the Forest Center application visits, which we hold uh, for all of the high schools and the Fair Lead Academy. And this event is for all students who are not able to attend the expo. So those students come over see a presentation, and they're able to visit at least three of our programs uh, throughout the course of the day. Uh, she also organizes our information for the Rising Freshman Nights, in which we visit all three high schools and prevent, uh, prevent, excuse me, present the necessary information to students. And I think Mr. Smith mentioned uh, that many of the community folks were amazed at uh, all of the opportunities we have to offer at the Forest Center. Um, Diana also uh, co-sponsors our Forest Center non-traditional organization and one of our tasks from the Maryland State Department of Education is to create opportunities for students in non-traditional programs which means we're always trying to encourage young ladies to enter fields like the trades, young men to enter fields like teaching and, and the health professions and uh, Diana does an amazing job with uh, sponsoring that organization. Diana also organizes and also sets up all of the post-secondary school, uh, the uh, trade unions and industry visits. So we have a number of community folks who come into the building to present to our students and Diana uh, handles all that. And in addition to that, she handles uh, and organizes the college access program for students. Um, so she works with those professionals and individuals to uh, pair them with students so that they learn about the college process and what it takes to be a uh, incoming uh, college freshman. Um, keeping in mind that Diana is the sole member of the uh, counselor or the sole counselor at the Forest Center and our enrollment is currently uh, about 1,020 students and uh, she was able to do all of these things while continuing with her regular counseling duties. Uh, she is truly a most valued member of the Forest Center family um, during her time, the Forest Center has enjoyed an increased enrollment and in addition has had a 100% completion rate over the last two school years. That means that zero students have failed in the final year of their Forest Center program over the last two years. And that is due large in part to the work that Diana does. So um, we are very proud to announce that uh, Diana was, a, uh, was selected for this award and will be recognized in Baltimore, Maryland for her exec exemplary performance in CTE. And uh, Diana will be commended for her work in creating the highest quality public information and outreach materials, uh, which promoted secondary career and technical education programs in St. Mary's County. And with that, I'd like to ask Ms. Kraft to come forward.
and bef before we go to a, before we break, um, I would just like to say, oftentimes we think of education and we think of the classroom teacher. We may even think of the paraeducator, but it really is wonderful tonight to recognize all of the other people who really contribute to making a well-rounded whole child experience, whether it be career education and things that are going on at the technical center, whether it be expression through the arts, or ultimately. Ultimately, when we really take a look at a lot of our high school programs, it's the athletic directors and the activity coordinator. I will tell you, we wouldn't be going to any of these plays over the next several days if it wasn't for the activity coordinators at Chopticon, Leonardtown, and Great Mills. And so thank you to all three of you. You make the school system possible. Thank you. So why don't we take our... Okay. Attention. Uh, oh, I want to say something. When I was giving my report on um, screen agers and innocent stolen protecting our children online, I failed to thank Anna Laughlin and Jill Morris, who are sitting in the audience. They are co-presidents of EASMEC and Don Pipkin, vice president. I did thank her, but I forgot those two very important people for bringing this to the county. Thank you. So, I will take a 10-minute break. This is We are back in session. Do we have any public yeah, comment? Yeah. Okay. All right, then with that, may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move approval of the consent agenda as presented. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, Mr. Hartwick, <coughs> emergency generator at Greenview Knowles. Exciting why, would, why would you need an emergency generator? <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> And we don't use snow days, right? Yeah. <laughs> Wrong end of the county. Yes. There we go. Good evening, board members. Uh, this is actually the second time we have brought this uh, this contract to you. Uh, we had to reject the uh, bid back in November, mm -hmm. um, and uh, hopefully tonight we will we will be successful in the award of the emergency generator. Uh, just to refresh your memory that the funding for this project is uh, composed of two sources, $200,000 is FY16 QZAB allocation uh, and $44,440 in local funds uh, for the project. Uh, one of the big hurdles for QZAB uh, is that they must conform to the provisions of Davis Bacon and particularly the the wage determination. Uh, we did select Greenview Knowles Elementary School uh, not only for the generator but for a n number of other uh, low voltage system upgrades. <clears throat> so the installation of the emergency generator is actually uh, reusing uh, uh, a generator that was relatively new from Spring Ridge Middle School that had to be replaced as part of that renovation. Um, a second element uh, in the project was to upgrade the data infrastructure at Greenview Knowles in order to support the Wi-Fi access points uh, to, to the level that is found in, in other schools. Um, the sound system in the cafeteria is original. Uh, and it's failed, and they're now using a, a, a portable unit. Uh, we had the security system main panel replacement as part of this project. Uh, also, the public address system repair upgrade. Uh, I will tell you that with the systemic HVAC project that we did a number of years ago, we basically replaced all the PA wiring, and that was the main problem. So going down the road, we think we will just have to replace the, uh, the uh, console unit. And then finally, there was a desire to add a few more fire alarm devices um, and make sure it was tied in properly to the portable units that are at or relocatable units at Greenview Knoll. So those were the, the different components. Uh, we did retain Guy Associates as the engineer for this project, but as we got into this, it was clear that the budget was not going to be sufficient for every 
item, uh, in particular the fire alarm system grew substantially in scope. Uh, so originally we had a base bid and six add alternates and that base bid was the emergency generator uh, and replacement of the security uh, uh, head panel. So uh, again, uh, we asked you and, and you rejected bids in November due to, we received two bids. Uh, one was rejected because it was non-responsive to the MBE requirements. Uh, and then the second bidder was, the bid was far in excess of the budget. So we came to you at that time and said, well, look, we know there are priorities. We think we can kind of segment the work to some degree. Uh, and take advantage of very specialized contractors. Uh, and so we have done that to, to some degree. Uh, in talking to the school, they were really, uh, really uh, very intent on getting the data infrastructure and Wi-Fi system uh, uh, improved. So that was their personal highest priority. Um, so what we did was we used some existing contracts to do that work. Uh, and it ultimately saved about $2,000 off the original ad alternate for, for that item. We also went back and looked at the, uh, the sound system and uh, simplified that in discussion with uh, other vendors and uh, then put it out for uh, request for quote and that came in substantially less uh, about $9,800 less than the original bid. So there was some good savings there. So g given that we were able to accomplish those two, we felt pretty confident that we could rebid the emergency generator and the replacement of the security uh, panel. So we advertised on email and marketplace on February 8th. Uh, we had over 700 vendors and contractors notified through e Maryland Marketplace, uh, but we only had three local contractors purchase plans and specifications. Uh, we received one bid on March 8, uh, 2017. Uh, it turns out one of the contractors that purchased the plans and spec decided to bid as a subcontractor uh, to, uh, to the single bidder. That single bidder is uh, Dennis Anderson Construction Corporation. Uh, Mr. Anderson's group has done a lot of work for St. Mary's County Public Schools over the years. They did the mechanic field site improvements. They did the systemic HVAC at uh, Oakville a number of years ago. Um, and they've held our unit price contract for indefinite quantity general construction for a number of years. Uh, the bid was uh, responsive to the bidding requirements uh, by utilizing a MBE electrical subcontractor. Their participation is 27%, one of the highest percentages we've had in some time. Um, the public school construction program, which oversees the QZAB, does permit uh, an award to a single bidder. Um, so. Uh, and then finally, the, the, the bid of Dennis Anderson Construction Corporation was just over 99000 and that compared to the original bid of 130000 So this is kind of the recap, again, looking at the total uh, funding of 244000 uh, listing the single bid from Dennis Anderson uh, at 99040 uh, but in addition to that, we've had a number of expenses, uh, design and construction administration uh, with GIPE is $22,000. Uh, the data and Wi-Fi was a combination of existing contracts, uh, as I noted before, in the magnitude of $45,000. Uh, we have not awarded this yet because we wanted to award the, the generator. Uh, but the lowest quote that we got for the sound system is $22,000 from ARC Systems. Uh, Mr. Howard and his group has reviewed uh, the system submitted and, and, and find it to be a, uh, an acceptable system. So with, uh, with the, the bid of Dennis Anderson construction, uh, we will also be asking for a construction contingency of 15000 
bringing the subtotal to two, just over 204,000, leaving us uh, just over $40,000 in the remaining balance. We are in discussion with a specialized fire alarm uh, contractor uh, to, to talk more about what we might be able to achieve uh, within that $40,000. The system does work. Uh, it, it's just a matter of adding some additional devices. So as a QZAP project, uh, because the cumulative is over $100,000, we will have to submit uh, this contract uh, and the others to uh, the IAC. Uh, and so we would expect an April approval uh, of, of that contract. Uh, and since we have the generator, uh, we, can, we can commence that work uh, almost immediately. Uh, as I mentioned before, we're still looking into what can be done for the, the fire alarm system. So that's, uh, that's our recommendation to you tonight to award to Dennis Anderson uh, in the stated amount and asking also for a construction <laughs> contingency of $15,000. Is the generator that you were getting from Spring Ridge? I think it's probably a total of about four years old. Okay. And what is the lifetime, just generally, for a generator? Probably in the range of 10 to 15 years easily. Okay. They don't run that often. I mean, they're tested on a weekly basis. Uh, so, and this one runs off propane, which is a little easier on the on the engine. So. Uh, yeah, we think we're getting a good value by, by reusing that. And then uh, will they be, since it's not a new generator, I mean, who then will be providing a warranty? Will it be the, what is it, the Dennis Construction? Will they be um, providing warranty on, their, on uh, their, their service and their work? Or is it go back to who provided, you know, the generator to begin with? Um, as far as warranty and service on it, they uh, they will they will be providing a new transfer switch uh, to match up with the generator, uh, and they will warrant uh, the workmanship on the rest of the work. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a contingency of fifteen thousand dollars on yeah. a ninety-nine thousand dollar contract. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, that's a, that's 15%. That's pretty high, isn't it? For it? It is, but on these smaller jobs, uh, you know, usually my percentages are a little bit higher, uh, especially when you have to understand this is, a, again, is a Davis-Bacon project, uh, and the wages are quite high, and that, that's the reason. I mean, I, it's rare that we ever use all of our contingency, but we just like to have it so that there's no delay in uh, authorizing the work. It isn't all your con contracts uh, under Davis-Bacon uh, wage, wage uh, thresholds? Uh, I couldn't quite fully hear okay, you. Okay, I'm sorry. The work that you do for the schools, doesn't, have to, doesn't all of your labor uh, require Davis-Bacon? No, it does not. It, it does not. It, it only uh, applies to projects that have their uh, origin in federal funds. Now, uh, we do have on state-funded projects, if it's over $500,000, right. then we have prevailing wage. And there's a little different wage sure, scale. I understand. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. I don't have any questions. Thank you. No questions. Thank you. No questions. Okay. With that, may I have a motion for this action item? I move that the Board of Education approve the contract award SMCPS 2017-05 DSS-DC for the installation of an emergency generator and security system replacement at Greenview Knowles Elementary School to Dennis Anderson Construction Corporation in the amount of $99,040 and further authorizes a construction contingency of $15,000 for the project. Do I have a second? I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Just want to 
roll right into Great Mills High School. Okay, very good, <laughs> very good. Uh, yes, the second item tonight is the re replacement of three rooftop units at Great Mills High School. <coughs> now these th three, uh, three units um, were originally installed in uh, the mid-1980s. This is the section closest to Great Mills Road, just to kind of get you oriented. Uh, they were not replaced. Uh, in the 1995 uh, modernization and addition at Great Mills High School. So they, they have really served their useful life. Um, this project originated uh, in the Comprehensive Maintenance Plan uh, and was included in the FY 2016 local CIP uh, budget. Um, again, uh, we kind of looked at, at the funds available, uh, we started uh, looking at the project, uh, and it turns out we did not have sufficient funds for all three units. Uh, so what, uh, uh, what was a real challenge on this project was um, we did not have the original design information on the units. Uh, most times we, we have that information archived for but for whatever reason, we could not locate it. Uh, so we took the extra step of hiring a testing firm to come out uh, and determine what the operating parameters uh, were of the existing units. Um, GIPE Associates, again, was re retained to review that testing uh, and establish a basis of design for the replacement units. Now, we always considered this to be a replacement in kind which really simplifies the work. I mean, literally what happens is they will, the contractor will come in with a crane, lift off the existing unit, put the new unit down, make his electrical connections, there's new control work associated with it, uh, but that's really the extent. And it turns out that um, train the original manufacturer, uh, although they, could, they uh, could not find the original design information themselves. They did have the model number and that helped us get, again, close to what uh, we found uh, when, we, when we did the actual testing. One thing that we also discovered is that one of the units, uh, the unit closest to the media center, um, uh, a number of classrooms had been taken off that air handler. So that air handler was really over capacity. So we were able to downsize that unit, and we think that net reduction is about $5,000 for that decrease in size. So in this case, again, we did a, a procurement, a request for proposal, uh, because we wanted to make sure that the technical uh, qualifications of the contractor were equivalent, uh, and we also asked for pricing. Uh, we advertised on email and marketplace on February 16, 2017, we had a lot of interest in this project. There were eight, 18 firms requested proposal packages. Four firms submitted proposals on, on March 3, 2017. Um, we wanted to keep this simple, and we wanted price to, to, to uh, be the determining factor if the contract, contractors uh, had equivalent uh, experience and qualifications. So we graded the technical qualification on a pass-fail basis. Uh, and then we took the next step of having telephone interviews with all four firms to make sure and verify the information that was submitted. It was our determination that all firms demonstra demonstrated the sufficient experience and capability to perform the work. So again, this is the recap. Uh, the funding uh, from the uh, FY 2016 CIP was 185,000, uh, and then uh, last October there was a um, uh, approval for a number of maintenance uh, projects. $200,000 uh, of that was designated for Great Mills High School. So the total funds available to us at the time is $385,000. Uh, you see the the proposal uh, from all four uh, proposers. Uh, MCOR services um, was about 6% less than Tempco Incorporated, the second lowest bidder. 
Um, the test that we, in addition to uh, the construction, we also have the testing and design totaled twelve thousand four hundred dollars. Uh, add that to the to the low bid, and again we're asking for a contingency uh, here of about ten percent of the thirty-two thousand uh, dollars. The difference here is that you're taking a new air handler and putting it on an old system. And so um, we, we just want to have that leeway in case there are things that have to be changed out that we weren't uh, down the line that we were not, not aware of. Uh, so that brings us to just over 372,000 with a remaining fund balance if we use the entire 32,000 uh, construction contingency of $12,727. So we're able to accomplish uh, the work with the funds available. MCOR Services uh, Combustioneer is a, a national firm. It's the largest firm of, of the four that have proposed. Uh, and they do specialize in mechanical and construction services locally, and most importantly, they perform, perform similar work for PG County Public Schools and PG Community College. They have done much larger projects, uh, replacing uh, over 18 100 ton units. Uh, in, in recent years. Uh, they had strong references. Their surety uh, is actually rated A++ by AM Best. So in, in that way, they are, um, they are responsible. So that's, uh, again, going to be our recommendation that you award to uh, MCOR for the stated amount, and we ask for a construction contingency of $32,000. No questions, thank you. Uh, Guype Associates that, that did the, the uh, study, performance study, uh, did they look just at the chillers or did they look at air handlers? It was just the air handlers. Is the chiller, uh, well, what you need to know is <laughs> um, Great Mills High School is kind of a hybrid. There is a central chiller there, but these units are package units. So okay. they have the compressor Condensing. for the air conditioning part of that unit. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, so I, one of the things that I've experienced in, in my profession is airflow. Yes. A certain amount of cubic feet yes. per student. Yes. I, I remember uh, four to 600 cubic feet per minute. Uh, it, I was just curious if they took a look not, not only of <clears throat> Uh, the condensing units per se, but the whole system, the whole, the whole system to make sure that, that uh, they had enough heating and cooling uh, requirements for the, for the yeah. students. And that was the, the, I mean, that's why we had a testing and air balance company come in so that they could verify what the total airflow was for the unit. Mm -hmm. uh, Train did give us some parameters and we compared it to, to that. Uh, and Guyp Engineering looked at it from, uh, from that perspective uh, and did not feel that we needed to increase the size of the, of the, of the fan. Um, just a comment. Uh, when I first looked at this, um, my question was, did you do the proper testing? And I, I want to uh, compliment you that you did the, did the thing that a lot, of, a lot of contractors don't do. A lot of architects don't do so. Well, I'll have to tell kudos, you it's kudos, from kudos. lessons learned. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. All right, thank you. I have no questions. Thank you. When will you start <coughs> the project and what is your anticipated completion yeah, date? Yeah, great question. Um, we, um, uh, all, I will tell you that all four proposers proposed on the train unit, okay? Uh, and they're all using basically the same control contractor. So it's going to be pretty straightforward in getting the submittals in to order the equipment. And we would expect the equipment to, to arrive on site uh, at the beginning of June. Uh, and we have, uh, we have talked with the principal, Mr. Heibel, uh, for the coordination of, of those going in in, in mid-June after school's out of session. And it's, uh, contractors are saying a week and a half, in my experience, that's a, that's, uh, mm -hmm. I would expect them to be done faster than a week oh, and a half on this project. That's great. Thank yep. you. Thank you. 
Mm. You've answered my questions. Thank you. All right. All right. Do I have a motion for this action item? I move the Board of Education approve the contract award SMCPS 2017-06 DSS-DC for the replacement of three rooftop units at Great Mills High School to EMCOR Services Combustioneer in the amount of 327873 and further authorizes a construction contingency of 32000 for the project. Do I have a second? I second. second. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank All you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Mr. Varner? Custodial equipment. Good evening. Good, Good evening. evening. I'm here to talk to you, uh, hopefully get your approval for continuing our current contract vehicle for the um, repair of our custodial equipment and, and preventative maintenance services. I'll start off with a little bit of background information. Uh, last February, uh, I brought before you uh, this contract, which you approved uh, through Frederick County Public Schools unit price uh, for Citigroup Incorporated to be our vendor to procure parts and labor services uh, to repair our custodial equipment um, up to $40,000 operating funds per year. That particular contract was valid through February 28th of this year. Um, during this year, um, we've had great success with Citigroup. They're very responsive to our needs. Um, we have them scheduled coming down on a, on a per week basis. Uh, and they visit both the shop that we have at the Division of Sporting Services as well as going to our school sites to repair our larger equipment that isn't easily moved back and forth from school to shop. Um, and even if we have an emergency situation, they've been very responsive and are often uh, have a technician down in St. Mary's County within 24 to 48 hours. We've been very happy uh, with this contract. In addition, um, many, in fact, the vast majority of our custodial machine equipment or purchase from Citigroup so it's an advantage for us to have uh, the same company doing preventative maintenance on those as well as repair. Um, recently Frederick County uh, by use of their extension recommendation committee um, approved an extension of that contract through March 8th of 2017 um, excuse me through uh, February 28th of 2018 um, at the same pricing structure that, that counts for parts, labor, uh, as well as travel fees. Um, we would very much like to continue using this particular contract. It's been very successful for us, uh, and I am, I am here seeking your approval to do so. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have at this time. I have no questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, I have a question. When, when Frederick County puts out their <laughs> bid, um, are there, like what you need for your parameters for your equipment, is that, is it always the same as what they're looking for or is um, really you're just trying to fit into their needs, what your needs are? I don't know if I'm explaining very well. Um, basically, okay. basically if, go ahead. Okay. I think what she's asking is that when you are looking at Frederick County's contract, mm -hmm. are you, are you, tailoring what we need for our maintenance efforts to fit what the contract has in established in its parameters. Right, okay. instead of, that's, that's it, I was trying to think, <laughs> instead of doing your own contract to actually tailor to your needs. Not necessarily. Um, we do go out and, and, and we establish what our needs are, and then, and then Vicki and I go out and see what other vehicles are available out there. But this particular contract, um, in this particular service that we need, along with a couple of others that require someone driving from a distance to get down on our peninsula. Um, it's a little bit difficult to, I mean, I think we take advantage of a county like Frederick who also does their equipment repair in the same way in that um, that bid was set up with travel time from the D.C. Baltimore metro area to Frederick County. We can take advantage of that even though the distance or city group or other vendors that travel down to us is a little bit further. Um, so that's an advantage. But to answer your question, uh, we, we establish what we want first and then determine if there is an appropriate vehicle out there. And if not, then, then we build our own spec and bid and contract. Okay. And I noticed that there were some, like, uh, some dashes in here where it says, like, fee for pickup 
uh, re-delivery of equipment or on site. So is that something that they just don't fulfill that? They just go down to the flat fee or? Um, right, we don't, we don't necessarily ha have them transporting our equipment at all. So we wouldn't need that portion of that particular contract. Okay, and yeah. do they do other equipment besides just the equipment that is the City Corps that you purchase from oh, them? Oh, they do all of our equipment, all of uh, whether we purchase from them or not. Okay, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the only question I have is, <clears throat> do you see the cost benefit to the school system by using uh, the Frederick County contract vehicle, or is there any economies of scale, uh, expertise that you can transfer, things like that? Well, um, in, 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 the, in the months leading up to this particular decision, whether we wanted to stay on this contract or not, uh, Ms. Mail and I did look around, and a lot, of other, a lot of other Maryland school districts aren't necessarily doing their equipment this way, um, where they bring somebody in. So we both made a decision that it was, it was cost advantage to take, you know, because of the travel time and uh, the costs that certain vendors put into their bids for to, to right. travel extended distances. So that was a key factor in our decision to, to try to stick with this vehicle. Okay. I have nothing else. Okay. I don't have any questions, thank you. Okay. Um, what kind of uh, equipment are they servicing? The big equipment, like those riding buffers and things like that? All of our scrubbing machines, be they walk behind or ride on, all of our buffing machines, again, some are large ride on at, at high schools, um, down to our backpack and hip vacuum cleaners. So everything Just that has an engine everything. in it that we use, they service for us as needed. Thank you. Yeah. They've been doing quality service. Absolutely. And so I'm satisfied. Yeah. Thank you. You've answered my questions. Thank you. Thank you. All right. With that, and I have a motion for this recommended action item. I move that the Board of Education approve the continued use of Frederick County Public Schools unit price contract 13 M. H, excuse me, M8 with Citigroup Incorporated to procure parts and labor services to repair custodial equipment up to $40,000 utilizing operating funds throughout the duration of the contract, <coughs> February 28, 2018. Is that a second? Second. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Kelly Hall. Mrs. Hall brought there a great many I friends. Yeah, good. <laughs> Welcome to all. Here we go. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I want to begin by uh, sharing with you that this presentation is about programming <coughs> for the summer for at-risk students. And the important thing that I want you to know up front is that everything is a being paid for by grants, and you're going to see a lot of braided and blended funding and lots of partnership from the community to make this work. So our initial meeting was to address food insecurity. Um, we're going to have a longer summer, as you know, and we wanted to see what we could do. So we have always, in the last few years, had our Lunch and Learn program that's sponsored by the Judy Center, and that's going to continue. But this year, in partnership with our St. Mary's County Public Schools Food Service and Nutrition Department and a grant that they were able to get from USDA, we're going to extend Lunch and Learn for eight weeks. Usually it's been five. It's going to go to eight weeks. And it's going to run June 26th to August 17th, Monday to Thursday, because our school buildings are closed on Friday, at both Carver and at Lexington Park. And you can see the signs there. And we're going to make sure that we have press releases and flyers, and um, we use the, the phone out system to make sure that the message is saturated. And as you know, you come in for lunch and learn, you enjoy a nutritious meal, and then there's a fabulous learning activity with our partners four days a week. And there are some um, examples of some of the fabulous food that's been served in the past. And you can see some of our students last year were actually shucking the corn, and they'd never done that before. 
So our Lunch and Learn staffing at both George Washington Carver and Lexington Park Elementary Schools, we are going to staff that with a teacher and a paraeducator and two safety assistants. And the way that we're doing that, several years ago, our fabulous Judy Center won an award from the state of Maryland for the most outstanding partnership. It's a $5,000 award. And we really didn't have any great need at the time and thought, we're going to save this for a rainy day. This is the rainy day. Mm -hmm. So that's how we're going to pay for this. And you can see the list of our partners, and I'm going to introduce some of our partners that are here. You can see the size of the partnership that wraps itself into the Judy Center to make all of this work. Some more pictures of Lunch and Learn activities. Some of you have joined us in the past to see the public library, to see the NAACP, to see um, parks and recreation there, soccer in the park. Um, you've seen some really exciting things that the kids enjoy doing. Now, Lunch and Learn is going to run for eight weeks, but summer is 12. So we reached out to one of our strongest partners, the public library. And Mrs. Doran and Ms. Katsonis from Food Services, we got together quite a few times to figure this out. And the library is going to help us. So we're in the early summer. In the late summer, because we know schools need some time to clean the buildings when students and staff leave, and they need some time at the end of the summer to clean the, staff and or clean the school and prepare it. Um, and on Fridays, the library is going to work with our food service department to access the grant, and they are going to serve food. Beginning as early, once you determine the, the calendar and you take out <laughs> snow days, as early as June the 12th, um, for the first two weeks in June, and then the last two weeks in August, and every Friday, and lunches will be served at the library from 12 to 12.30. So those are going to be nutritious bag lunches, fruit cups, milk. They're going to be free meals for students, and parents are going to eat at a minimal fee. Now, we know sometimes that our parents can't afford to pay for the meals, and we don't want them to take food from their children. We want to be respectful. I reached out to our partners, and the Department of Social Services said, we will help you. These are our families. We will help you. They're going to pay for, assist us in paying for the adult meals. Also, our faith-based partnership, Church Without Walls, pastors, Dennett Goodwin Sr. and Dennett Goodwin Jr. are here. And they also have given us a, a tremendous donation to help with adult meals. So here's the calendar, and you can see 12 weeks beginning as soon as you guys tell us what our last day is. <laughs> we'll be able to start. So you'll see lunch at the library for two weeks, lunch and learn for eight weeks, lunch at the library for two more weeks, and every Friday is covered. While that's all going on, we have historically had a Title I grant-funded summer school, and that's typically run four or five weeks because it's a long summer. We're going to extend it this year. We've braided some funding. It's going to be located at George Washington Carver Elementary School. Um, the dates are going to be July 10th to <coughs> August 17th. So these children will be able to access Lunch and Learn and Lunch at the Library before summer school. It will run Monday to Thursday from 8 to 3. We have 120 spaces for rising third, fourth, and fifth grade students from the Title I schools and also from our Title I participating non-public schools. So students will receive breakfast, lunch, and a snack every day. And breakfast and lunch are served through the same grant that is providing um, uh, the lunch and learn and lunch at the library meals. And Mrs. Doran and Mrs. Katsonis make sure that we're well covered for breakfast and snacks as well. Transportation will be provided. Every bus will be air conditioned. And then we have our staff. A summer school administrator, Ms. Dina Mingo, who is the assistant principal at George Washington Carver, she's there for the summer. And she graciously agreed to help us with costs. She is going to serve as our summer school administrator. So we'll have her there the whole summer. We're going to hire certificated teachers, skilled paraeducators, a summer school nurse, a summer school secretary, and then in collaboration with another one of our school system partners, 
Mr. Mark Smith in the 21st century, he is going to pay for us to have an enrichment coordinator and an enrichment paraeducator. And so here's their sample schedule. The students arrive in the morning, they have breakfast, they have reading and literacy instruction, whole group and small group literacy instruction, then they have a math block, whole group and small group, then they have lunch and a recess kind of a period, and then in the afternoon, it's, it's like a day camp. It's wrapped into their learning activities, but it's a lot of fun, exciting, enrichment sorts of activities, and at 3 o'clock they go home. Um, the enrichment activities will align with the academics and the summer program, and the students will be engaged in team building, arts and crafts. Some of you have joined us in the past. We bring in the reptile man. We do some really fun things. They'll have planned, um, they'll, we'll have planned field trips, and we're working on that right now to see where we can go, and we may have a couple surprises for the kids if they're really good. And then we have a Head Start summer program, again, funded completely through the Head Start grant. It's five weeks long, um, and it's going to be located at Green Holly Elementary School. All buses are air conditioned. Now, because these students are four, and we're preparing them for kindergarten, it's a half-day program. So they'll come in in the morning, they'll have their breakfast, they'll have their um, academics and their arts and crafts and those kinds of things. They'll have a healthy snack and they'll go home. And it will also run July 10th, but it will end August 10th, Monday to Thursday, 8.30 to 11.30. And those children will get, courtesy of food services, a family style breakfast, which is how Head Start students eat, and they'll also have a healthy snack. And the staffing for that, again, funded completely through the grant, we have our Head Start coordinator, um, our lead teacher. We'll have three other classroom teachers, four paraeducators, a nurse. Our family service providers are on staff all year. They'll be there, and we have all kinds of um, volunteers. We'll have weekly visits from the public library and food service and nutrition. And lastly, we have the 21st Century programs. Program number one is called The Gathering. It's at Great Mills High School for rising ninth graders, and it will meet Monday to Thursday at Great Mills High School and on Friday at St. Mary's College. And program number two is um, Monday to Thursday at Park Hall Elementary School. And it's um, uh, in August, there's one week at St. Mary's College of Maryland. So Mr. Smith and I will work very closely with Mr. Serbiak to get some students routed for the Title I <coughs> summer program and some students routed for here. So it's going to be a busy summer. Now, I would like to recognize the tremendous partnership that we have here. So um, let me begin with the school system folks. So we have our amazing Judy Center. We have, and if you would just stand to be recognized. Oh, no, no, no. They have to walk the red carpet. Yeah. If, Come they, on. If, they, if they were, Fabulous, so, if they were so willing to walk the red carpet and just sit in the front row, that yes. would be lovely. And we'll okay. take a picture afterwards. Okay, so everybody ready? All <laughs> right. <laughs> so from the Judy Center, Judy Center is led by Mrs. Wendy Binkley, our Judy Center specialist. Thank you. <laughs> Carrie Sperling, who is our family service specialist. Renetta Carson, our program assistant. <laughs> Ann Kirshner, our early childhood liaison. <laughs> and then we have food services, Megan Doran. <laughs> and Sherry Kutsonis. <laughs> and we have our Title I Summer School Administrator, my friend, Dina Mingo. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> we have our Head Start Coordinator, Mrs. Kelly Dobson. We have our 21st Century Grant Coordinator, Mr. Mark Smith, a great friend of Title I. And then we have some of our partners here. We have the Director of Social Services, Mrs. Ella Mae Russell, and we also have Team Leader, Carrie Machado. <laughs> Representing the faith-based community, we have pastors, Dennett and Dennett Goodwin. <laughs> the 
the public library. We have Deputy Director Marianne Bowman and Amy Ford. <laughs> Representing the chairperson of the Early Childhood Action Committee, we have Mr. Kelsey Bush. Um, the ECAC is a part of local government. They are great partners with the Judy Center. And we have the president of the NAACP, Janice Wathauer, longtime friend of education, longtime friend of mine. Please join us. So, um, Board of Education members, you know, they say it takes a village. This, this is, is the village. village. Here wow. it is. <laughs> Thank you all so much. We are so grateful. Thank you. Hey, don't, but don't leave. Could we get a picture? <laughs> Right. See if there's movement waiting, behind, the, behind the door. While we're waiting for the picture, I know at, um, at Mr. Smith's State of the Schools presentation um, back in the fall, the question was posed after the, the governor's directive came out to begin school after Labor Day as to what we're, how are we going to handle with the longer summer. Um, and there was kind of that uncomfortable shift in the room by some of our funding agents as to how it was going to work. So. Lights sorry, out. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to sincerely thank all of you for coming together and totally thinking outside the box on this in order to make sure that some of the neediest students in our community and in our schools are taken care of, um, you know, during the longer summer program. Um, it does take a village. Um, I, a lot of people just take what you do for granted. A lot of families who don't see the same struggles that you, the families you work with we take that for granted too. And to have this number of people in the community and the school system um, be working this hard. And I'm sure you started in September in order to piece all of this together and the cooperation yeah. among everyone. <laughs> you can say yes, I know you did. It was when we found, it, you, when we had the calendar, right. you know, once once that was decided, it's like, okay, there there were some sleepless nights in there until we could get it figured out. But right, it's just, it's, it's just a phenomenal, um, network of support for the families in this community. Thank so, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Okay. So how about, if we, how about if we move them all about and get a good picture of all of them and then give everybody an opportunity to say something. So That's fine. So you're going to have to, you're all going to, you're all going to have to come forward. You're all going to have to arrange yourself in an appropriate way up here. So, so, <laughs> appropriate. So, That's so the, the key. So the taller people drift in the back. The other people drift to the front. Let's get a really great picture. We want to get everybody in here. All line up right here. I'll be on Jim's lap. I'll be on the school web page. Yeah, this, 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 um, you know I was going to get that to you because I know it was a mouthful. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. And wonderful opportunity for us to summer. So we're all... In the middle there, your faces in. Okay, the first three in the front, stand to the side. Do you stand this side, the, way, the other way? No. Nope. Hey, oh. Everyone up to the side. Everybody face. Stand to the one lady in the back. Yep. Stand, stand up. Gosh, it's an old school hammer. <laughs> old school little one. <laughs> oh, thank you, Sandra. Thank you all for walking the red carpet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Hall or comments? Go ahead. Comments, go. ahead go. Um, well, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's here. I know, um, speaking from a student perspective, I've gotten to sometimes volunteer, like at Judy Center, and just to hear what students have to say, and it's just an amazing um, opportunity for those who really need it, and the fact that we have so many people 
in the community who are there to help during the summer, and especially now that we have mm -hmm. a longer summer, it's fantastic. And the fact that this is all grant funded is amazing. I don't know how you did, I don't know how anybody did this much work, you know, to get everything together. Because I imagine, like Mr. Smith was saying, you guys have had to put a lot of long hours in um, piecing this together. And I feel like the outcome will be um, great as it always has been. And I really just thank everyone for helping. Well, thank you. Thank you for your kind words. You know, there's no problem that you can't solve when you get smart people around the table. So we figured it out. So mm -hmm. thank you. Mrs. Weaver. Well, you are amazing. And so is each person in here for stepping forward to work together to help out to make this work. Um, each one of you are a piece of the puzzle to put it all together. And Kelly, my hat's off to you for, you know, I don't know. You're you're amazing. Well, it's it. that village. <laughs> it's uh, right. that village. <laughs> but but yes, thank you. and thank you each one for stepping up. I have gone to the program uh, last year several times. I did get to see the uh, reptile the, man, the, the reptile man, the <laughs> and and also the kids shucking the corn and things like that. And they had a great time. And you know, they're they're in a great environment, um, learning and having fun at the same time, getting that meal and. You know, each one of you are a part of it, and thank you. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to uh, echo uh, what everybody else is saying. Um, Head Start uh, program, this is a classic example of how it can work. I know on the national level, a lot of people aren't particularly happy. Uh, they want to cut funding on Head Start. There's nothing in my mind um, more important than helping kids, especially uh, pre-K children to get into a learning environment to help them trans you know transition into a formal school thank you schooling so thank you very much thank you thank you I said my thank yous earlier and I, thank you I mrs. Bailey. I, I just I cannot it's it's phenomenal the amount of work and I'm I'm sure you did have sleepless nights and I know you did start before the calendar was finalized <laughs> so knowing you so um, but thank you very much everyone and good luck <laughs> this summer I'm I want to know where the field trips are <laughs> All right, I'll let you know. <laughs> you can ride on the air-conditioned buses. Yeah, Ooh, I, I was thinking about that one, that's especially <laughs> made with no AC. Yeah, <laughs> might be a good day to be. Go ahead, Mr. Washington. When I learned by executive order that uh, school would start after Labor Day, I knew 100% that this county would rise to the occasion and our students would be fed. They would have enrichment activities because this is the county that I live in. St. Mary's is a county that come together for the children. And we love the children, they are the future, and we have to make sure that they have what they need to be successful, happy, contributing members of society. I have visited the program and I saw the yellow snake. I touched him, Ms. Hall touched the snake too, and the students had a fabulous time. And the Church Without Walls, I think they bought about 100 pizzas one day I was there, and I think the <laughs> students ate every pizza. I don't think it was a slice left. Thank you for that. I just want to thank everybody for what you're doing for the students. This is a great county to live in, and I will continue to visit the programs. Please and it's wonderful how we can come together in the county, work as a team to get what's done. And I knew it was going to happen. And thank you, Ms. Hall for getting all the partners together. I thank the library that's very good and innovative to, for them to have a lunch and a learning activity on Fridays, that's fabulous. And they're in a perfect place where it's safe. They can just blossom. And we don't want those minds to lose what they learned over the summer. And I thank you all for what you do for our students. Yeah, I think too often people just assume <clears throat> that everybody is the same as they are or that um, these issues don't happen in St. Mary's County um, because you are so good at pulling all of this together and, and knowing all these folks and, and reaching out and um, having that understanding. Um, I don't know that everyone fully appreciates the work that's involved <laughs> and the extreme need that's out there. I'm very grateful that you have pulled this all together. I'm grateful for the partnerships, and so many of them are longstanding partnerships. Um, this is not the first time you've been here with us. Um, this, is, um, this is a repeat performance, and for that, I'm very grateful. 
and please tell Michael Blackwell, the director of the library, um, thank you. Um, I know he's been out of town for a, a conference, but um, uh, very grateful that um, you are there and that you are <clears throat> partnering with us this year in an incredibly more extensive way than, than we've needed in the past. Um, and I, I truly hope that this is the beginning of a, of a long-standing effort um, because this is not, not something that's going to go away after this summer. It's going to happen again and again. Um, and for students to know, for children to know, for families to know, and parents to know that um, you are there for them is uh, incredibly powerful. So thank you all very much. Very, very grateful. And if I could have the final word. No. As we were talking, Mrs. Montgomery was mouthing words over to me and drawing me over to her to remind me to make sure that we praised Mrs. Hall for her work. Did we forget to? No. no. I think no. We're good. <laughs> Mrs. Hall introduced me to the concept of braided funding. <laughs> if you do a word count on how many times she says braided, she really has introduced it. And it's an incredibly important way of describing what happens. A single strand is made much stronger when it is coupled with another. And multiple strands braided together are an incredible incredibly strong thing. So I did, I, I apologize for dragging you all up and then, and I know that many of you probably don't want your photo on the front page of the Enterprise or on the web page. <laughs> you're actually go, you're I going don't, in a magazine. But <laughs> you do because it is that power of the group. It is the power of braided missions together to serve our kids and it's an incredible thing and to you Kelly Hall for introducing me to braided and for all of the work that you do. As a, I don't have children with long hair, but those people who do, they tell me braiding is an art. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> that would be the artist of braiding. So just thank you. Thank you to all of you, and thank you to Mrs. Thank you. Can I say one more thing that I neglected to say? If anybody is worried about children over the weekend, the Judy Center, we've got it. Um, the Judy Center will refer people out to various agencies. We have other partners that are willing to step up with snack sacks. We have food pantries generously donated. We've got that for the families that, that are going to need help to get through the weekend. And I will give one more plug. I know at Margaret Brent, the National Junior Honor Society is having a food drive that is specifically going to Southern St. Mary's County Food Banks, the food Wonderful. pantry that is up um, – uh, off of Old Village Road, and then I think the second one is the homeless uh, shelter in Lexington Park. So um, it was coordinated through um, the Rotary Club and several of the teachers up at Margaret Brent. So the flyers have been coming home, and that's going through April 7th, and there's a whole <coughs> list of needs. So it is not – so your, your, your community outreach and your fabric is, now, is reaching um, – that's farther wonderful. north up to the That's northern end oh, and yeah. in incorporating the students so um excellent so thank you can you give them a plug as well thank you all right thank you thank you partnership very nice. thank you very much okay with that our next meeting is wednesday april 5th at 9 a.m just before spring break just da, before da, da, da. spring break we will have the last day of school at that point in time yes we Correct? will Yep. All right, and we are adjourned. Thank you.